I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Indeed, it is again to welcome you and to be welcome into your homes wherever you are. And we thank God for the privilege of sharing together again virtually and during this Yuletide Christmas season of the year. We thank God for the privilege that he has given us to see another year almost in completion and allowing us to know these days which we have lived and to share these days with those that we have met and those that we have known and loved, not only joyfully in life, but also joyfully in salvation where we share our faith with those that do not know the Lord, and we share our faith with those that do know the Lord, that we may strengthen one another in faith, in service, and in life. We welcome you to this virtual service, and again we say that God has richly blessed us, and we thank you for your support, your prayers, your finances, and your concerns for this ministry here in Durham, North Carolina. We trust and pray again that God will enrich your time spent with family during this year. Thank God for sending his son. We thank God for what his son has done for us. And we pray and trust that God will continue to lead and guide you and that this time of year will be a year of joy for you and your family. Let us pray. Father, we do thank thee for the privilege of worship, and we ask now that thou would bless this moment of fellowship, moment of praise, moment of adoration. We ask that your presence will be with us as we join together in this manner to worship thee in spirit and in truth. Bless this congregation and all of thy people everywhere who know thee in the pardon of their sin and who serve thee with joy and gladness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 16 through 19. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Jesus When troubles burden me down, Jesus, I know your love's all around, Jesus, oh, precious. sweetest I know Jesus I'll tell you where Jesus, 
Your name's as sweet as I know. Jesus, I'll tell it wherever I go. Giving God's way, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Malachi 3 verse 8. Community Baptists and friends, you may bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse. Due to the COVID-19, Community Baptist Church will be open to receive your offerings each Tuesday from 12 o'clock p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You may also send your tithes and or offerings by mail Please mail to Community Baptist Church, 4821 Barbie Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. You may also give your tithes and offerings online. Please visit our website at cbcdurham.net backslash giving. church say amen. amen handling heaven's moment handling heaven's moment Jesus was born in Bethlehem but there is no record that he ever went back he grew up in Nazareth and he lived in Capernaum those two cities have more influence in the biblical record than Bethlehem. As a matter of fact, Bethlehem stretches in the Gospels as far as John chapter 7 verse 42 when there was a commotion concerning Christ coming through the seed of David and would be born in Bethlehem where David was. So there's no record, perhaps he went back between the ages of 12 and 29, but there's no record that Jesus ever went back to Bethlehem. Born there, yes, but not revisiting that city. I think that perhaps that may be the reason why there's not much that's said or found throughout the Gospels and the subsequent letters in the New Testament concerning that great event that occurred in the presence and midst of the shepherds when the angel came and told them, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, 
that shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. That great heavenly host that suddenly appeared, crying glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That great event. is nowhere else mentioned in the Bible. It does not have a recurrence. It is not as popular beyond the event with the shepherds themselves. They appear no more. Even though the shepherds found the babe and told abroad what they had seen and heard. It's not popular. It's not found. As a matter of fact, none of Jesus' miracles nor his parables Paul mentions. Not one miracle, not one parable. N none of the letters, not even the book of Acts or even in Revelation, none of the books relate to one another in the Gospels concerning Jesus and his activities and ministry. We don't see any duplications in the New Testament like we do in the Old Testament. Some corroboration between 1st and 2nd Chronicles and 1st and 2nd Kings. The repetitious nature, the repeating of incidents in the Old Testament. None of that is present in the New. They seem to be one time events handling heaven's moment heaven's moment in that field with the shepherds when the glory of heaven opened and that angelic choir burst into song glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men heaven's moment heaven was happier at that moment than the earth because the sun was sent. And no doubt heaven is more happier than the earth because the sun has returned. Is it to be that heaven is more happier than we on earth? The choir sang gloriously that night Filling the hearts of shepherds for the first time. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That was not a human ensemble. That was a heavenly host. Well. That was no senior choir, no male chorus, no children's choir. That was a heavenly host that was glad that the sun was sent. Heaven is always glad when God does something. Back over in the book of Job, chapter 38. Job and all of his arrogance and his need to talk to God. God finally showed up in the latter portions of that record about Job. Asking that famous question, where were you when the foundations of the earth were laid? Going further in that chapter, he says, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy, anytime God does something, heaven gets happy. We see in this field with these shepherds, heaven is more happier than the earth and God sent his son and you can imagine when his son ascended back up into heaven, heaven got happier more when the son returned than when the son left. How do we handle heaven's moment? How do we handle it? Well, let's look at these shepherds. What did they do when they finished Gazing and hearing and seeing. The text says they came with haste. They came in a hurry.
They came as fast as they could. Nothing held them up. They saw something from heaven. They received a, a word, an announcement from the throne of God. They, they witnessed and learned that they were recipients of a grand event that transpired on the earth. And they could not keep themselves still. They handled heaven's moment by coming in haste. And when they saw what they were told they would see, they sounded abroad what was told them in the field. They came with haste. Came to what? They came in haste as fast as they could to a cradle with a baby in it wrapped in swaddling clothes. Brothers and sisters, we are not shepherds and we did not have that moment like they did, but, but, but how can we apply that which they did to our lives in the church? If they went in a hurry to find a cradle, Shouldn't we be in a hurry to help somebody find a cross? Yes, sir. If they mm -hmm. didn't let nothing stand in their way, if they hurried as fast as they could, if they saw heaven open and a chorus sing about a cradle with a baby in it, shouldn't it be that you and I have a can't wait attitude to help somebody find a cross where sin can be washed away. Isn't your new life in Christ more joyful than, than a baby in a manger? Because it's not a baby that saved you. An adult lamb of God yeah. saved you. It's not, it's not a baby that, that shed its blood and bore sin by nail and suffering and crown of thorns. It was a grown lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Yes. If shepherds can run to find a baby, yes, 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 yes. why can't we run to find somebody and help them find what we found? Redemption and salvation. They came in haste. What else happened? Well, those who heard what they said wondered. How can we apply that to us? Well, number one, you, you, you can't wonder or have a childlike feeling concerning something so great. You can't have a childlike feeling when God is moving in the world. They wondered. They had a childlike feeling concerning this magnificent event that these shepherds shared with them. And brothers and sisters, too many of us have childlike feelings in the church. Jesus don't call us to be children. He calls us to be cross bearers. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up the cross and follow me. Childlike feelings can't go through suffering. Childlike feelings can't stand for what's right and true and just. Childlike feelings. Have no time to be strong and vibrant and to bear cross. You have no time to be a coward or weak or scared. Because if you hook up Jesus, you'll find out that even in your weakness, you are strong. 
Childlike feelings have no motivation. Childlike feelings have no purpose. The text says they heard what the shepherd said and they wondered. Went no further with their thoughts. It, it, it trifled in some, some, some moment of joyful ecstasy, but it faded. That's not being possessed by the Holy Ghost. Once he takes up residence in you, you have a power and you can't help but grow in grace. Childlike feelings. Can't bear the burden in the heat of the day. Childlike feelings can't stand up for Jesus. Childlike feelings know nothing about holy, holy, holy Lord God well, Almighty. Well, 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 well. Let's look at one more thing and then we'll be through. Let's look at Mary because the text says, but Mary. She did something that the rest of them didn't do. See, wondering about God does not cause you to learn about God where you ought to learn them. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, some of us, all we want are the goodies of God. We just want his goodies. We want his blessings. We want the things that he can provide if he so wills to. But, but we don't want God to get down in our hearts. Well, that's the only place the word of God can go. Thy word have I hid. Where? In my heart. That I might not sin against thee. That, 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 that met religion without meditation is a shallow religion. Anybody can get a hold of your brain when your religion has no meditative character. Anybody can influence you. Anybody can change your mind. Anybody can influence you. You'll wind up like a Galatian Christian tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind and slight of doctrine. Mary kept these things. Mary wouldn't allow wonder to influence and control what God has done. You want to be strong and be able to stand on your own two feet? You want to be able to not let anybody influence you? She kept these things. Pondered them. She put them where they need to be in her heart. If you let the devil get to your heart, you got a whole lot of mess going on, brother. Because the heart belongs to God. Eternity is in the heart. Your heart belongs to God. I know you're married. Or I know you are the child of some parents, but your heart belongs to God. I know you took your vows. I know that you love your family, but your heart belongs to God. I know you got friends, and I know you get lonely sometimes, and I know that you know you can't make it in this world without some friends and companions and relationships, but you need to be mindful that your heart belongs to God. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Why? Because the heart belongs to God. Eternity is in the heart. I'll go if I have to go by myself. Brothers and sisters, if, 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 if shepherds can run to a cradle... You ought to be able to get somebody to run to the cross. If, if people hear and they have a frivolous response to what God is doing, you got to protect yourself. 
God comes in your life and he reveals himself to you, you make sure he goes and gets to where you need him to get in your heart. I like that song. I hope we can sing it one or two times. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to do right in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be more worshipful in my heart. Your trouble ain't out there in the world. You, you don't mess up down the street. Don't, don't nobody, even the devil, made you do it. You cracked up and messed up and fell up in your heart. Your heart doesn't belong to God. Your heart is not in his hand. Your heart doesn't have his strong arm of protection. Your heart is not hovered by the wings of glory. She kept these things in her heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. You wouldn't lie so much. You wouldn't connive so much. You wouldn't misbehave so much. You wouldn't get caught up in a lot of junk so much. If your heart is in God's control. So let's be like Mary. Let's be better than shepherds. Let's be more, more earnest than hearers who only wonder. Let's be like Mary. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Father, we do thank you for helping us to know how to handle heaven's moment. Bless these, your servants, who've come today to share in preparation of what your people will hear a few days hence. Save to the uttermost, save to the near. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Doors of the church stand ajar. There's one in listening land today who Know that you need a savior. Now is your opportunity. His name is Jesus the Christ. He died on Calvary's cross many years ago with you in mind. Right now, if you would confess your sin with your mouth and believe in your heart that all that the scriptures say Jesus did on your behalf and behalf of the world, believe those things. Read and study God's word, you shall be saved by your faith in him. Is there one right where you are? You need not tell anybody, but tell God. And he'll save your soul. Now may love, joy, peace, and mercy from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with each and every one. Let us all say. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Like Jesus in my heart.
my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In Oh, 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 oh.